What's up, everyone? Welcome back to JC Gaming. We're going to talk some more Alliance Heroes of the Spire. Today we're going to be reviewing the Water Monsters, the Water Heroes, talking about how to gear them. Still no definitive uh, rating yet. I'm sure it'll come out. I don't have enough experience with all of them to really rate them relative to one another, but I can talk about them. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, let me set some stuff up first. How many powers do I have? Stars. I'll talk a little bit about the new guys that are coming out in about two weeks as well, but um, you know, Knight did a really good stream, Nighthawk did a really good stream uh, last week, I want to say, or a few days ago, but he really went over all the new guys, and I would encourage you to go check out his Twitch channel and everything. But anyway, so without further ado, let's get going. First we got Bubbles, who is the Blue Alchemist, Bubbles. Um, so the thing that he's good for, he's got, you know, blinds, he's got the uh, extend duration of a buff, take another turn, but he's good for sort of anti-sleep there, he also has some utility here on his A3, he gives a random defensive buff to all allies, cool, so, you know, ruin him, probably Witch Stone, help with them buffs, but he's immune to sleep, and whenever he takes a turn, he removes sleep from all allies, uh, so he's the counter to uh, the speed sleep meta right now, unfortunately he's a 3 star, so he might just die from AoE, even though he's not slept, so that's kind of a downside to him. But, you know, if you build him, build him tanky, maybe some Witch Stone, put some speed on there so he can clear the sleep off of your allies faster. Um, sucks that he's a 3 star, so he doesn't have the base stats to really go with it. But, if, you know, if you really wanted to invest in an anti-sleep uh, hero that, you know, helped out the team, he's a, a good choice for that. Alright, we have another uh, bear, the Blue Bear Sven. Russian blue bear, I guess. Um, so he has the standard problems that the, all the other bears have, where he doesn't have any of his abilities. Uh, or it does deal based on armor, so uh, never mind. I mean, they're they're good for beginner tanks, but you know they're going to be outclassed by the four star and of course five star tanks. Uh, but you know he can taunt for one turn, which is that great. It's only a one turn taunt. Um, he gets a two turn heal over time whenever he does maul. If you're gonna uh, run him, because you need a blue tank, um, you know, run him probably double armor, single HP. Uh, I would just go with armor set or with HP set to make him tanky. I don't think there's really too much. You don't want to invest too heavily in any of the bears as far as end game gear, because you're gonna pull some four star, the paladins, and stuff like that. And that's where you want your gear to go. Again, these guys, you know, these guys are the guys I was thinking about that have the problem where some of their damage is based off of attack, some of it is based off, based off of HP. Um, you know, he does have the uh, leader skill, which, uh, you know, bonus HP to all water monsters. If you're running a pure water team for some dungeon content, maybe. Maybe you could use him. Um, he does dots. You know, uh, <laughs> how you'd ruin him is honestly anything under the sun. You can go. HP for his third one so that his nuke does more damage. You can go attack so that his, you know, first and second skill do more damage and he has more self-healing. Um, again, I wouldn't I wouldn't invest too heavily in him, uh, especially early game. He could be fun. I mean, all of these style monsters could be fun once you're late game. You just want an extra toy to play with and you want to experiment with builds. They have some interesting skills. It'd be, it'd be nice to know what the modifiers are on them. Alright, and then we have the Water Fairy, probably one of the most popular early healers. The reason is, is you can pick her up for the, from the Alliance store. Um, I feel a rank your Alliance has to be. It was fairly low, if not right off the bat. It, it, pretty soon you'll unlock uh, pieces where uh, it starts off, you can buy two sets of five uh, each week, and you need 15 to summon her. 
So that means every two weeks, you know, you can summon yourself a Lily. Uh, that's good because you can skill her up really fast, um, or for free, without having to rely on RNG. And with max skill, this goes down to three turns. This goes down to three turns. Uh, she has a heal and a heal over time, if you look at what her ascension does. Um, so it heals, does heal over time. This increases uh, how much healing the allies receive. It gives them like a heal receive buff. And then it also removes one, or reduces the amount of turns on a debuff by one. So she's a pseudo cleanser. She doesn't really cleanse. Oh, thanks for following. Um, she doesn't cleanse, but she reduces debuffs. This is bad for bombs, I've noticed, unless you manually control it. Because she'll reduce the cooldown from like two to one on a bomb, then it immediately explodes. Uh, so just kind of, you know, watch out for that if you're a new player using her as a cleanser and you're going up against bombs. All right, we have the Water Petra, Lapras. Um, he's got a decent kit for a bruiser. Uh, so he's not a good solo monster because he doesn't have the heal slash cleanse that Petra has on his skill too. And he doesn't have the XP leader. But he does have the shield for all allies, that's nice. He does have the face off max HP stun skill one. Um, and his second one is another stun that attacks twice. It doesn't say no damage based off his max HP, so it's kind of odd. You would still build him HP tanky, bruiser style, so as much HP as possible. Some crit, some crit damage. Um, here we have the water. Thanks for the follow, Hex. Uh, we have the water rust hound, right? So the water Hus rust hound, all of them have, they're sort of a guard, <laughs> they're guard dogs, what do you know? Um, so they guard an ally, so that whenever the ally would get attacked, they get attacked instead. Uh, they have a chance to heal, they have a chance to, or not a chance, but, uh, or yeah, this one has a chance to continue attacking for 30%. Some of them say if, if it gets a kill, they get another turn. This one just says a continuous attack at 30% chance, but it's based off his max HP. Um, I haven't really seen any of these be useful. I don't see many players, if I don't see any players using them currently. Uh, but you know, he's... All the Rust Hounds could be kind of fun to play with if you have nothing else to play with. I wouldn't invest in them because, you know, the, a guard isn't a very good tank ability because it only covers one ally. Ideally, you want taunts and provokes for multiple turns. That way you're kind of protecting the whole team. Uh, but, you know, if you want something to play with, why not? Thanks for the follow, King, King Rills. Or King Rills? However you would say that. <laughs> Thanks for following. Um, Alright, so we have Silvis here. Now, Silvis, you might see him a lot. He's actually one of the better water three stars, so I'll definitely keep him if you pull one. Uh, the reason is, is he has a very good uh, support kit. Um, definitely ruin him with stone, uh, so that his support abilities do uh, more uh, effects. So, you know, everything his... First, he has a speed bar reduction that will get improved by 50%. Uh, he has a stun. Uh, that stun will become dispellable if he's on Witch Stone. And he has a haste and power buff for the entire team that will be improved by 50% if he's on Witch Stone and if he crits. So you need Witch Stone and crit on him. Uh, but as you can see, he provides lots of useful utilities for stunning, reducing attack bar, increasing the haste and power of your team. Pretty useful all around. And he has a leader skill that gives an auto shield whenever your anyone on your team drops below 30% HP. So extra survivability for your team. Good good all around here right there. Alright, so now we have uh, Blonde. He has a XP leader skill, but he can't really solo anything. So you if you if you pull one of him, he, he's, he's not very that useful either. Um, so if you pull one of him, he's a good candidate to level up and feed away to something else. You can set him in the leader slot and then use auto or use your other, if you're not using Petra, use another leader skill or another uh, hero to be your solo farmer, but set him in the leader skill so you take advantage of the 10% extra XP. Um, but yeah, he has the standard, he can steal buffs, he does a 10% heal, 30% shield, not that great, but it's not bad, it's just single target. Uh, and he does an AoE, uh, AoE attack but only a single buff for himself for counterattack. so... Like I said, he's not really that great. I wouldn't recommend building him, use him as fodder, use his leader skill to make, you know, get the extra 10% XP bonus while you're leveling him up to feed to someone else. Alright, now we have this new guy. I'm gonna talk briefly about Vandal. He's from the Water Nomad. Um, so he has, uh, you know, uh, Knight mentioned that these guys are meant to do low damage but attack many times. He attacks four times on his first skill. Pretty nice. 
as payback. That's basically counterattack whenever anyone on your team gets attacked. Um, and then you have uh, Scavenging Strike, uh, which heals himself for 50% of the damage done. So I would, you know, you, these, these are going to be squishy DPS builds uh, for him where you're going to do like, uh, you know, start off with more HP, but then as you level him up, if you wanted to use him for your water DPS, uh, switch over to more power as his base HP and armor increases. Um, still though, 3 star, he's there to fill a role of a multi-attacker until you get a 4 star, 5 star better unit. That's, that, that, that's realistically why they put uh, heroes like this in the game. I would not focus on him solely if you're a newer player, but you can get him up to maybe five star and then leave him there and then decide if, you know, if he's contributing a lot to your team, then by all means you can keep rocking him. All right, now we have Azure, the Ice Bolter. Uh, she's the Water Pistolier. Uh, people mainly use her because she has an AOE uh, buff strip. 50% chance once you skill her up and uh, an AOE slow all in the same ability. So that's kind of useful. Um, they're not kind of, it is very useful uh, if you can get an AOE stripper and an AOE slower. Um, and then she has, you know, this is a random attack. Attack twice. Well, no, it's not random. Some of the other ones are. This one you target attack twice, armor break, and an AOE for low damage. Her damage output, you can build her as a damage dealer, but honestly, it, it takes a lot of good gear to get her to doing decent damage, and she's very squishy. So I would build her more of a Witchstone uh, sort of support character, um, which means you know puts more HP, defense, those sort of gear on her, um, and focus more on yeah, her being an AOE buff remover and an AOE slower. Now that would really be the focus of her until you get good gear, late game gear sort of deal. Um, you know, if you try to use her as a damage dealer early on, she's just gonna get shot and killed. It's gonna be game over for her. Uh, so yeah. And now we have the uh, Ringtail Crowbar. Um, so this one, I think he's not as good as uh, some of his brothers that have more AOE based kits. His kits are all single target. Um, it does bonus damage based off of aim, it can do more armor, armor break targets. Um, it does high damage based off of uh, how much HP they have. So if they have less HP, it does more damage. Um, it also does damage over time. So he's a single target water damage dealer. Not, not really that bad. I mean, if you need one. Don't get me wrong. If you desperately need one, by all means, you can use them. I just think I wouldn't invest too much in them. Um, standard attack gear, if you were going to use them, um, you know, start off putting more HP as you level them up and evolve them up, shift into more power, always crit rate, crit damage. Um, here's another single target. Oh no, this one does AoE. So two single target attacks, an AoE attack, damage over time, does a mark, extends the mark, and it does a single target slow whenever she uses her second skill. Um, I would say she's a better single target uh, three star water damage dealer than the wing that we just looked at. Um, again though, you're going to eventually get better things in the four star category, so I wouldn't really invest heavily early game in six starring these guys. Uh, if you want to play around with them, if you're an in-game you know, player and you want to play around with some stuff, by all means, you know, experiment with what you can do, but both of these guys are kind of, you can use them as water damage dealers starting off until you pull something better. Um, so here we have the water, or the saber juice. Um, he has the same damage over time on his first skill, he does his uh, stealth, you get a power buff on second, and a 70% chance to mark on his third, and it does damage based off of speed. Um, and whenever he stalks, he gets you know, debuffs reduced by one. Uh, he's not bad, but I think the the order one is probably the best one. Um, maybe borderline with the fire. So so the fire and the nature one both have a uh, attack bar reduction on the third, which I think provides significantly more utility than just a mark, you know? Because um, these guys, they're there to do damage over time. So you want to either run Witch Gun or you want to run Swift Steel so that they hit twice with their A1 um, to do more dots. You, you're not there, they're not there to do, they're not there to, to really do much but dot and survive. Um, and whenever, you know, if, if you're looking, well, what else can they do for utility? 
I think that having the attack bar reduction is better than a single target mark, so that's just my opinion. But if you need a water daughter, he's a, he's a good candidate for that. And then we have the shield maiden, the water shield maiden. Um, so she has shield bash, but the, she gets the, the shield. Uh, she doesn't do the heal block. The taunt and counter attack, whenever she taunts, she gets 20%. Uh, she heals herself by 20%. Uh, attacks all enemies, gives them crit buffs. So she's a better water tank um, than you know the bear that we looked at earlier. Um, uh, she also does an AoE crit buff. She's a better tank because she has a uh, taunt, which lasts for two turns once you skill her up, um, which is significantly better than a single turn provoke on a single target. Um, if you want to build her, you know, run her, I would say double HP, one armor, and just as tanky as you can get her. Um, you don't really need counter attack on these guys because they have counter attack built into their time. So you can just go, uh, you know, the straight 20% uh, HP or 15% armor here, or the ascended version of that. Ascended higher, better one. Anyways, all right, and this is this is actually the better, the best three-star damage dealer class. I, in my opinion, out of all the three-star heroes out there, in every element, these provide these free blades provide the most like burst damage. So if you're going to go for a 3 star damage dealer in any element, I would recommend the free blade as that good choice. Um, they have good single target damage from their first and their second, and their first actually gives them a speed bar buff. Um, and their third is always an AoE with some sort of effect to it, and this one does uh, crit break. And then second does the power buff, and if he kills the target, he gives it to the rest of the team, um, and he also takes another turn. So if you kill someone with this, everyone gets power buff, he gets to go again. Pretty good modifiers. Um, now I'd start off running him with like uh, the plus power uh, equipment, and then shift. I think it's uh, you know Dragon Fury or yeah Dragon whatever is the better version. But the ones that give you plus twenty, plus twenty five percent power. Start off there, um, and then once you get crit, once you get good crit damage gear, you can shift over to War Tech, which is really gonna boost his damage output. But he has to crit to make use of that. But pretty, that, that's, I think this is, these are your go-to guys for 3-star damage dealers. So now on to the 4-star. As soon as you get an Oath Bow, your 3-star damage dealers just kind of go out the door. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Their, their modifiers are a lot better than any of the 3-stars. They, I mean, their, their modifiers are like, you know, some of the best in the game right now. They hit hard. Um, they do damage based off the end. But he also sleeps. He does an AoE sleep. You see this guy all over the place in the arena uh, because of his AoE sleep. Any AoE CC is going to be you know, golden in a lot of content. Um, the only time it doesn't shine is when you're facing bosses that can't be uh, slept. Um, and even then, his, his base damage is so good that he's still a good choice for a dungeon damage dealer anyways. Um, he attacks three times with dots, so there you go. He's still good for dungeons because he does dots. His first one, uh, there's bonus damage based off of debuffs, considering he dots and sweeps. Yeah, it ups his first one and everything's based off of aim. Um, how to build him? Definitely go for War Tech, you just crit up there, get some crit damage on him. Um, I've seen a lot of people go War Tech and double HP or HP armor, and then crit damage on the gloves. Um, so it's interesting, they don't have any additional power except for the, the jewel slots. Um, and he still hits like a truck. So he doesn't even need a power piece of gear to hit hard. That being said, if you put power on him, he's gonna hit even harder. Uh, but you know, a dead DPS does zero DPS. So you know, it's up to you. You want to find that balance of surviving and killing stuff quickly. Uh, whether you go aim or speed, it's, it's, it's a tough call. You want him to go first, uh, so that or you want him to go fast, so that he does the sleep before the enemy team gets to really move too much. Uh, but he does better damage based off aim, and if he doesn't have enough aim, then the scoop's gonna get blocked. Um, so it's really a balancing choice. I have seen some people run, um, you know, the aim sets, the, the two sets that give 15% aim and 7% uh, armor pen, and then there's the upgraded version of it, and instead of Vortex, and then they go straight speed on the ring and the boots. So that's an option. Um, it's really speed is better for arena, Aim is good for everyone. So if you're building him as a general purpose, you know, damage dealer, you can't go wrong with the aim. If you're going with arena, you might need to add some speed on him to speed tune him with the rest of your team and how you want your results to be. 
All right, moving on. Let me make sure I didn't skip anything. I noticed I accidentally skipped one last week when I was reviewing. All right, so we got the Water Barbarian. He is here for his skill three, his brawl. Um, whenever he attacks, everyone on your team also attacks, hits a random person, and then he gets a Berserk buff. Berserk buff doesn't matter. He gets a power buff when he's attacked, doesn't matter. Does heavy damage. Doesn't honestly matter. <laughs> None of this matters. He's there. He's gonna go first. He's gonna get everyone on your team to attack, and it's gonna be like a gang punch to the face. And if he's fast, so you want to build up speed, um, you know, getting your damage dealers to have multiple turns on round one is a very good strategy right now. Um, so you match him with like a, another hero that also has a similar team attack ability and two very strong damage dealers like the Oath Bows. And now you have your Oath Bows attacking three times in the round one. Everyone's on speed, everyone's going first, there, there's gonna be, your opponent's gonna be missing some guys whenever they get their first turn. Um, and that's really why people like Tor. Richard is name of Tor. Um, he does decent damage with his first and second, uh, but again, his third is why people actually build him. And so he's an arena monster. Um, has you know had experience playing with him or seeing him outside of arena. Uh, he could probably do decent for a water damage dealer, but not nearly as good as the Oath that we just talked about. So moving on, all right, we have Arctis, who's the water bard. He kind of falls in the same category as the, uh, the Water Oath Bow, except his uh, AoE Sleep can be reduced down to be used on skill one, or turn one. So if you skill him up, then that two turn cooldown becomes a one turn cooldown, which immediately goes on his first skill. So he can do a first round AoE Sleep. Yeah, skill him up so that he can do that on his first turn, put some speed on him. Um, and there you go. Yeah, he, he obviously needs some aim to land that, but I would say speed over aim. Um, he also has a skill or a heal by 25%. And you can uh, you know, skill him up and go up more. And he hastes a random ally every time he uses skill one. Um, and it goes up to 100% chance. It's 30% plus 20 is 50 plus another 50 with his awakening. 100% chance to haste an ally for one turn every time he uses skill one. I went and run, so whenever we were talking about, uh, I think we did the fire one, uh, yeah, uh, that's the one I skipped. Um, so like the green one, he reduces his cooldowns on his skill one, so he's good for like swift steel, so to get multiple uh, A1s, so he can reduce his turn, or his cooldowns. This one doesn't have that, and multiple haste isn't really conductive to that. Uh, so you know, with him, I would just go maybe, uh, the aim sets, the void leather, and uh, the, whatever the other one is, it also does aim and armor pen. Get his aim from that, and then go straight speed on the boots and the ring. Uh, so that way you can have both aim and speed. So we have the the farmer, the water uh, battle mage, Kellis. He has a 20% XP boost, uh, which I think is the largest in the game right now when he's a leader. And they just recently reworked his skills so that he can be a better farmer. If you look at his A3, it does AoE damage, reduces their attack bar, and if he's the only one on the team, if all your fodder are dead, then he stuns everyone for two turns. Yeah, you know, a two turn stun, guaranteed, if he's the only one alive. So, uh, a great ability for farming. Um, his other stuff also does decent damage and, uh, you know, gives him some buffs, some haste buffs, slow the enemy, uh, and a mark on skill one. Um, the problem is if he has no heal heals, so you need to run him on a life leech build. Uh, you need to get those two piece sets that whenever he attacks he gets life back based off of how much damage he does. I would honestly run like maybe the entire you know, three sets of those so that he gets 45% life steal every time he attacks. Um, you know, you, you'd have to play with him to see if he's, if he's dying then you need to evolve him up and put more life steal on him. If he's not even taking any damage, if he's like staying at full life, then you can probably come off the life steal a little bit and add some more either damage or survivability, uh, depending on which way you want to ruin him. Um, same thing, you know, if you're going life steal, uh, then you can tend to build him with less HP and more attack. Uh, that way, you know, his, his, he's doing more damage and gaining more life. Um, so sort of a self, it's, it's, it's mitigation via yeah, self-repair, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but he, he needs enough life that he doesn't get killed in a single turn. 
So just, you know, whenever you're building them as a farmer, try to do a zone um, on man, not on, ma well, on manual, but with the play button going and see how he does. And from there, judge if you need more life, if you need more attack, or if you need less or more life steal. All right, so next we got the Water Beetle Lancer. Um, one of those weird tank, but not tank. He's a good off-color tank, so if you're doing nature content, then you guarantee it's gonna attack him. Uh, he has some, you know, uh, you can build him tanky, and he does uh, damage based off of his, or he doesn't do damage based off of HP or armor. Um, but he's pretty tanky, so, you know, you can build him double armor, single HP, or double HP, single armor. Um, put as much, yeah, uh, yeah, put as much, uh, HP and, and armor on him as possible. Um, so he does armor break, he drains speed bar, which is nice, and it's, it's a stun too. So stun and speed bar drain. Um, and he buffs uh, crit, crit resist, and armor buff on everyone. So not only does he help himself survive, but he helps the whole team survive. So he's kind of, he can fill that utility fourth slot um, for, for non nature content as well. Um, whenever he armor breaks, he gets a shield. Worth 5% of his HP, which he only armor breaks on his first, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So whenever he uses this, he has a chance to get a shield. If this stacked, I think it would be uh, yeah, a pretty decent, possibly solo farmer. Um, I don't think it stacks though. So unless he had like a gajillion HP and then armor broke, which is only a 50% chance, you know. He's, he's, he's not really uh, there for solo farming. This is just kind of some extra tankiness that they threw in for him. So again, you know, Runum, armor, HP, whatever set really works. I wouldn't recommend uh, counterattack because he's not provoking. I wouldn't recommend uh, Swift Steel because it's, it's not that big of an advantage to have a single turn armor break. It's, you know, there's other monsters that have better skill ones. Um, he could make use of it, but I think he'd be better as just straight armor HP build. Um, let's get that high. And then we have Otto, who is right now the king of farming. Um, the reason is, is he has this fourth skill that whenever he blocks, or not whenever he blocks, uh, whenever he takes damage, he has a 5% chance to heal himself 5% of his HP, and it increases with blocks. So the more block he has, the more often this passive is going to trigger. It's not a leader skill, so he doesn't have to be leader. You can use one of those uh, water uh, priest guys, whatever they're called, I forget, that has the 10% uh, leader skill. You can use them as a leader, just use him in the team as your farmer. Uh, but anyways, so you build him tanky. All of his abilities do damage based off of armor. Uh, so you want to build him double armor, and I would say either single HP on the gloves, or once you get him six starred and you have awesome gear, I've seen people switch and do a crit, crit damage build on him. Um, that seems to work really well. If you look at Jess, she's always hanging around chat room three. You can always find her in the top normally 15 to 20 in the arena. She has a really, really good auto. Uh, that'll give you an example of what to build. Uh, but generally you want to go for uh, lots of block, as much block as you can. You want to go for um, armor and HP, so you know you can do his tank stuff. Um, and then after that is crit rate, crit damage, um, and uh, obviously block on his boots and rings. Um, but looking at his skills, he has a chance to gain an armor buff. He boosts the attack bar of an ally and gives him a power and crit buff. And he does an AoE uh, attack that has a chance to provoke. Um, I want to talk about man up for a second. So as it works right now, whenever you fill an ally speed bar, any ability that does like fill an ally speed bar by 100%, it's gonna make them immediately go, but the you know right now Alliance has a overflow mechanic. So if someone is at like let's say 99% speed bar and you fill their speed bar by 100%, it's gonna put them to 199%, meaning they're gonna take a turn and then chances are immediately take a second turn right after that. Um, so they've talked about they might change this, but that's how it works right now. Um, as of, let's see, April 2017. So if you're watching this in the future, it might be different. Um, but as it is right now, you can make someone actually go twice by exploiting this, you know, full attack bar boost. And it gives them a, a crit buff, power buff, you know, on top of that. Put this on one of your nukers in, like, the arena, like, say, like, a, a fire oath bow, and, you yeah, know, you can just have them go, like, three times in the first round and, you know, destroy someone on the enemy team. Pretty fun stuff. And he's a farmer, so he's got lots of uses. Um, definitely recommend uh, building auto. Alright, so now we have the mechanic, 
what's her name? Nora. Nora the mechanic. So, uh, she has the standard, you know, uh, chance to give a buff. This one's power. Crit resist evasion. You need to skill it up for it really to be useful. One turn evasion buff. Isn't that great? <laughs> Two turns? That's useful. Um, she has drone strike, which is 50% chance to slow. If they're slowed, then it, uh, 50% chance to stun them. Um, and it can go up to 75% chance. So she wants, you know, you probably want some aim on her. Um, to make sure this lands and then increase it maybe to 100% chance. But I would see her shining if you pair her with an AoE slower. So someone else does an AoE slow, and then she comes in and AoE stuns them. So now they're slowed and they're stunned, and your team is just pounding on them. Pretty good little combo. Um, I haven't found a way to use her myself, but I do have one in storage that one day I'm probably going to play with. Um, she also has a res. Uh, so, you know, if someone goes down on your team, she can uh, revive them. Um, what you would gear her with, um, you know, Witchstone isn't a bad choice um, because she does lots of utility. Um, or you could also, and, and you know, so so yeah, I would, I would recommend Witchstone as the best fourth set. Uh, if you don't have good Witchstone, you know, anything to make her more tanky, she's not really a damage dealer, she's support, you want her to live. Um, yeah, so that's about it on her. Go aim or block on her, uh, her boots and her ring. Alright, so let's talk about Giles. He is a great water tank. Um, I personally have a six-star Giles, and I use him in a lot of content. Um, the reason he's so good, he has the same first and second skill as all the Paladins. Um, you know, this heals and does some damage on armor. This one's a taunt. Um, and this one, uh, he gains, he gives himself a armor buff and crit rate buff, or crit resistance buff. So it makes him a little more tanky. And he gets another turn. Uh, so this is super useful, because the other Paladins don't have this. But what really makes him shine is his skill 3, which is eye for an eye. Every time he moves, he takes a random debuff from himself and gives it to a random enemy. This is a lot of fun running the, uh, the Titan Guard uh, dungeon, where the, the boss puts a bomb on you. If he gets to go before your cleanser cleanses the bomb off, he actually moves the bomb back on, uh, on the boss. Uh, I don't know if it could go on the boss, but it definitely could go on the arms, and it like one shots the arms, so it's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, it's, it's also cool in Arena to see someone put a stun on you, and then you take the stun and put it back on them and still get to go. Uh, so he, he's a really good tank. Uh, I would ruin him, um, you know, since he has a uh, taunt, I would ruin him the counter attack build. Uh, but until you, you know, you don't want him on counter attack and squishy. So I would go like, you know, armor, uh, uh, as far as what in, in the slots, definitely two armor, one HP. Um, I would build him with just the, the armor sets, the iron steel sets to start off with. And then once you six star him and start getting good gear, then you can move him over to the revenge sets. Um, but yeah, good tank. So, uh, water pirate. Um, hero class named Pirate. <laughs> the Water Pirates, all the Pirates are really cool because they have a, a turn one bomb. Um, so on Witchstone, this bomb explodes and stuns. You need to throw a stun in there as well. Um, you want just straight power. You don't have to care about crit rate or crit damage. So everything power, uh, speed, or aim. Um, and uh, probably Witchstone would probably be the best choice. Or you can even do the multi-attack, the Swiss Steel ones that you put two bombs. Um, but she does, you know, she still is a buff, which is pretty nice, and it's 30% chance, but hits three times, can go to 50% chance. You're guaranteed to steal at least one of that, if not, you know, all the buffs, if they have, like, you know, less than three. Uh, she's really good there because of her A3, which immediately detonates bombs on all enemies. Uh, pair her with, like, an AoE bomber, uh, like one of the Nat 5, what are they called, battle mages, I think, or no, war mages, that have an AoE bomb. Um, or pair her with the light uh, ringtail that does an AoE bomb and, you know, immediately detonate all bombs on all enemies. And if they're witchstone bombs, it stuns them as well. So that's going to be nasty. I would love to pull one of, one of them because I have a light nine tails or ringtail that I plan on using eventually. Um, and she has a leader skill where she marks the enemy team leader for four turns. Four turns is a long time, so that's why they put this as a leader skill. Uh, because it's a long mark. Um, that being said, if I didn't have a leader skill, which there aren't many leader skills out there, uh, but you know, so I would use it if I didn't have one, but there are some other better choices out there. Alright, so now let's talk about the demoness. I always want to say succubus, because in most games, things that look like this are called succubuses, but no, they're demonesses. Ophelia. 
So, uh, you know, water damage dealer and a debuffer. She does confuse, she does uh, bonus damage based off of debuffs. She removes all buffs, so like a single target purge completely removes everything. Um, and it curses them so they can't get additional debuff or buffs. And a single target hits three times, 50% chance to increase the cooldowns. So she removes all buffs, she curses them, she confuses them, she, you know, increases their cooldowns. She's just a single target, I'm gonna mess up your next turn, or your next several turns for this one guy. Um, and that being said, she has pretty decent modifiers. Her still one does extra damage based off of the debuffs. Uh, so you can build her, you know, anywhere along the spectrum of a nuker to a supporter. You know, a nuker would be all, uh, you know, word tech, attack, crit rate, crit damage, uh, and all the way to the other end of the spectrum, which would be full support, which you make her tanky with aim, so that she's just there to land her debuffs. Um, you're probably going to find your sweet spot somewhere in the middle, uh, so it's really off of you where you want to go. I think War Tech is probably the best set for her, no matter where you go on that spectrum. Um, but, you know, you just have to play with yours and figure out what you want her to do, what you want her to bring to your team. Is she there for the debuffs, is she there for the damage, or is she there for a little bit of both? Uh, most of the time it's probably going to be a little bit of both. And then we have the Water Valkyrie. Uh, the Water Valkyrie is actually one of the better Valkyries because she does have a Provoke. Um, it's only single target, but at least it's a Provoke, whereas the other Valkyries, or some of the other Valkyries, don't have a Provoke. Um, she also does the standard guard with a counter attack, a heal, and she gives uh, a shield worth 30% of her HP whenever she uses that Provoke ability. Um, you know, single target fights, she can actually be a good water tank. Uh, most of the time, you're not one-on-one -on -one though. Or, your team versus one enemy. Um, so I think, you know, Giles is the better choice for a water tank than her. Uh, but she definitely could fill that role. Um, I would ruin her, and none of her damage is based off of HP or armor. Um, so she's not gonna, you know, she's not really a true bruiser. Um, you know, I would ruin her as, as much HP and armor as you can, and that's, that's pretty much it. She has built-in counterattack, you don't need counterattack. Honestly, Giles is a better choice if you can choose. If you can't choose, she's better than the 3-star water tanks. Alright, then we have Diana. Um, all of the spellbinders are great cleansers. They have this skill too that removes all buffs, or all debuffs, excuse me, and gives you a heal over time for each debuff removed. Uh, she does random block buff. Um, she also heals and gives counter attack and power buff for two turns. This is really good for, let's say you have like, you're running a team of like a tank, two supports, and a single damage dealer, and your single damage dealer is the one taking damage. We can throw this on them and it heals them, gives them a power buff, and then every time they continue to take damage, you know, they sit there and counterattack. I've uh, been, you know, screwed over an arena by this before where I tried to nuke down a damage dealer, didn't quite kill him, and then she comes along, heals him up, and gives him counterattack, and now every time I try to kill him, he's sitting there attacking me back. Um, so this is pretty annoying, uh, pretty decent, you know, all-around kit for support. Um, and this is why she's really good, is her leader skill, which you know, uh, gives a shield for 25% of her max HP to all allies at the start of each round. Um, that's really strong. So put as much HP as you can on her and exploit this to your advantage. Uh, so that, you know, every start of the arena, you have a giant shield on everyone at the start of, I mean, it's, it's basically, you know, you see Petra it's being annoying everywhere, right? Petra has to take a turn and use his shield. Imagine if Petra's automatically started off with a shield. That's that's what, uh, I forgot her name already, Diana. That's what Diana's passive does. So she is a really good support, a really good cleanser, and really fits that, that, that cleanser utility support role very well. Um, I would honestly go as much HP as possible. That's what set I would use on her would be the uh, Wraith Bone and Breaker Bone <laughs> that gives extra HP. And just try to exploit this Arcane Shield as much as possible. Alright, so we're talking a little bit about the Assassin. Um, yeah, they are the You Can't Touch Me DPS because they um, have Smoke Bomb, which is a four turn stealth. That's a, that's a, uh, a long time to be stealth for four turns. And you know, a lot of their skills don't break uh, or don't break sleep. 
Um, so she sleeps on the first skill, which is nice. The third skill uh, does an attack that doesn't break sleep, so that's pretty nice. And she has a leader skill that if she's stealth, then she gives herself a blocking crit resist buff. Typically, if you're stealth, you're not taking damage except for AoEs, so this is, you know, it helps her survive the AoEs a little bit better. Um, that being said, you could build her straight, like, you know, nuke, where most damage dealers, you want to put some survivability on her. She would need less of that because of this passive. So that's a pretty strong uh, uh, attack unit. All right, now we have the dragon, Leviathan. So Leviathan has some crazy AoE skills. Um, he attacks all enemies, slows, and puts them to sleep for two turns. <laughs> so two turns sleep, two turns slow, AoE attack. What's not to like about that? An AoE uh, haste for all your all your allies, as well as an AoE attack. Um, and this one is the standard skill one, where it attacks once and then attacks two random targets. I would definitely put this guy on Witchstone, um, so that the slow uh, is, is more effective. The sleep can't be dispelled. Um, the haste is more effective on your team. Um, you would. You can ruin him as a damage dealer if you wanted to. Most people make him more tanky so that he's not just sniped out. He is a like high threat target. I mean, any nat 5 you see on the enemy team is going to be a high threat target. Um, so, you know, you want some survivability on him if you're going to use him in arena. Um, or if you want to use him on element neutral content, like if you want to use him in a water dungeon, for example, where he might get targeted every once in a while. Um, yeah, you need some survivability and stuff. Um, but yeah, he can also be a damage dealer. Uh, Witchstone, you want aim on his, well, either aim or speed. Again, you have that balance between, you know, if, if I go first and I can do these like AoE, so, well, this one has a long initial cooldown. Um, but you know, the more speed he has, the more often that cooldown's gonna come up. Um, but yeah, so aim or speed. Um, you need enough aim to land the debuff. Once you get to that point where you're reliably landing his debuffs, then you can switch over to uh, uh, more speed. Uh, he needs crit with Witchstone. All Witchstone need crit. And he has this Heart of Ice, where his attack bar can't be redu reduced, and he can't be affected by slow. It's kind of useful. Not kind of useful, it is useful. Uh, so here are the bomber guys I'll talk about. Draken Mages, that's what they call them. So here's the Water of Draken Mage. Um, they have a 100% chance of removing a debuff from a random ally, so they do like a random cleanse. Only one though. Um, they do this, uh, oh, well, here's where the bomb is, mana bomb. Some of them have it on A2, this one's on A3. Attacks all enemies, puts a bomb on them. If they have buffs, it removes one buff and puts an additional bomb. Uh, so pretty useful. I would run him, you know, as much attack as possible. Uh, while also maintaining survivability, of course, um, because bombs don't care about crit, they don't care about crit damage, they only care about attack. That being said, if you wanted to put him on Witchstone, then you would need crit, because Witchstone, you know, your buff has to crit, and your buff critting relies on your crit rate. So if you go the Witchstone route, where you want a stunning bomb, then, uh, you know, put some crit on him. If you just want to do as much damage as possible with your bomb, then just go straight attack. That being said, he has this AoE power buff, crit buff, and debuff immunity, which is a really strong trifecta of buffs that he gives all allies. So you could, you know, get him up to like, you know, 60-70% crit and still run Witchstone. You don't have to get that 100% crit to get Witchstone to always occur. Um, and he has a lead skill that reduces the, the damage you take from water opponents. Uh, so really good for water uh, dungeons and stuff like that. Um, really, I mean, all of these heroes are really good support slash damage dealers. They have good utility, but they also do good damage in form of bombs. Pretty cool. Alright, so now we have the Lich. All the water liches are... They're, they're, they're like the Draken Majors, where they're awesome utility and awesome damage, but their damage doesn't come off of bombs, it comes off of raw damage output. And they deal more off of debuffs. So, yeah, Heal Block on A1 uh, spreads any uh, a random ally to all enemies. He can spread stun to the entire enemy team with his A2. Um, if, if stun is the one that gets chosen, you know, because it's random. And then you have this AoE heal or AoE that heals himself for the damage done. So the reason this is so strong is because it's an AoE attack. So let's say it does 
200 damage, which is a really, really low amount. So let's say you have a three or five star with no equipment, level one, and he's doing 200 damage with his AoE, and you attack four targets, that's 800 health he would gain. It's the amount of damage he does to everyone added up gets, gets you know, sent to him as health. Uh, so he's a self-sustaining damage unit. Any of these guys in the arena, they're really annoying because you'll be nuking them down, they'll almost be dead, and then they heal themselves back up with full life with this one ability. Super annoying. And on top of that, if he kills someone with this, he gets invincibility for a turn, which means you don't do damage to him. Um, he also has this passive that if an enemy dies, uh, he gets 20% speed bar and he gets a power buff. I would run him more tech with either like, you know, start off leaning more towards HP and then gradually shift towards, um, you know, running more power than HP once you get him six star. And again, the survivability versus damage output balance that it's, just, it's like a curve. You know, as he gets stronger, the HP and his natural survivability goes up. So his HP can go down and his power can go up. Um, but yeah, you could run these Witchstone as well because they have, you know, a heal block and stuff, but I think I would concentrate more on just making this A3 hit as hard as possible. Alright, so, now we got... the Super Tanks. These guys are annoying as crap. They're War Mechs, all of them are annoying because of their skill too. I talked about it when I was talking about the Fire one last week, but, you know, they have a taunt that lasts for three turns when it's split up on a four turn cooldown. Yeah, pair them with uh, someone like Rosie, who reduces the cooldowns of all, all allies, and he has a never ending taunt. Like, unless you kill him, he's always going to be taunting. Super annoying. He also has that stun that scaled off his armor. He has, uh, <laughs> he has this extra effect, which makes him a little bit better than his brothers, is that he purges a buff from the enemy whenever he gets attacked. So he forces you to attack him and then strips one of your buffs every time you hit him. Um, and then he also gets 15% or 50% block whenever he's lead. So if you need a, a decent leader skill, he's a pretty good one for a defensive, you know, tanky based team. Um, I'll run him double armor, single HP. Uh, you can run him counter attack, which is very, very, very. Uh, actually, that, that, that's what I would do. Run him. Uh, uh, what is that? Iron something? Iron claw. Is a counter attack set. He's got so much taunt. Why would you not want to sit there and counter attack? Counter attack stun. You know, throw some aim aim on him, and he can stun him up. That being said, he needs blocks so that he doesn't get stunned or slept himself. Because if you're taunting and you get stunned or you get slept, your taunt can be ignored. Um, so you know, do a balance between block and aim. Um, that being said, his leader skill gives him 50% block if you know, use him as a leader. So. That's 50% less block you would need to reliably block those debuffs. Throwing that out there, it's really, really, really good tank. Um, all right, here's another very good water damage dealer, the, the Rift Callers. Um, you know, the, the Liches are more based off of sort of debuffs and stuff. This one does have a lot of debuffs, but it, it does a better new, I would say. Um, because it does damage on its A3 based off of max HP, and uh, this can crit, and it can be multiplied by crit multiplier, and it can super crit on top of that. 25% of max HP is ridiculous. That's a quarter of, of the enemy's life bar. Like, she is the tank destroyer. Bosses take down like half their life in one shot with this A3. It's, it's ridiculous. If it's not more than that, she might have been a one shot boss, I wouldn't doubt it. Um, I don't have one. I wish I did so I could show you. That would be amazing. I do not. So take my word for it. I'm sure there are other people out there. Be on the lookout for other people that have um, these Rift Collars because their A3s do ridiculous damage. It would be cool to see some of those in action in the uh, equipment dungeons and to see how quickly they can take down the final boss. Um, those some other skills while we're here. 30% chance of silence. Uh, a uh, 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 a strip. So she has a strip and a curse as well, and she gets an extra turn after it, so ha ha ha. Yeah, remove your buffs, give you a curse, and I get to go again. Um, and this gives Captivate, which is uh, her first skill, a 30% chance to slow. So it turns into a 30% chance to slow and silence. So pretty useful. I would still go War Tech, Crit Rate, Crit Multiplier, um, Survivability Burst Damage, that, that whole thing. Um, you know, all the way at Wartech, though. 
Ma make her A3 ridiculous. And then we have the Blade Dancer. Um, this is almost identical to the Fire one, except it's in the blue variety, the blue Power Ranger, <laughs> you know? Um, but they put combo points on. Um, all their skills skill off of speed, so you want speed on them. Um, you don't need aim to land the combo points. I'm pretty sure combo points can't be blocked. Um, she does a slow, but go ahead and stare to build up combo points. Do burst damage based off of speed and then flurry them down. That's what they do. They hit fast, they hit hard, they put up combo points, and then they hit like 20 times with the flurry. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you get the idea. Um, I would definitely put War Tech on her as well. Uh, and yeah, just standard attacker philosophies for building her. Uh, she has an automatic effect that whenever she crits, she gets a power buff. So, you know, if she's an attacker, you're gonna have high crit on her with that War Tech anyways, She's almost always going to have a power buff on her as well. They do really good damage, and again, they are they hit fast and they're very annoying. All right, and then we have the Water Pony for anyone who is lucky enough to get a like, unicorn. Technically, everyone calls them ponies. Um, if you're lucky enough to get one in the pony event, uh, same skill one as the other one: five percent heal whenever they attack. Um, Thirty-five percent heal and it kind of revive that increases the cooldown. And this uh, AoE cleanse, and it gives them a crit buff and power buff. So she's a healer slash buffer. So she fits really good into a new team uh, because she gives that crit buff and that power buff. Um, but all of them do really ridiculous healing. I would run her probably life still, so that you know you increase the healing output from her first and second. You can also run her on swift steel so that she does her first more. Some people prefer that. Um, I guess yeah, you know, she has this leader skill that um, whenever an ally takes damage, uh, they can have a 30% chance to get a two-turn armor buff. It's after they take damage, it doesn't mitigate the damage, so it's not going to like prevent your damage dealer from getting one shot or anything like that, but it's going to add some extra survivability to your team. If you needed a, a, a water leader skill, I would honestly prefer Silas's leader skill over her leader skill, in my opinion. But anyway, Fire, or Silas was the water um, uh, cow looking three star guy. The one that I was talking about was really good support. You know, rewind a little bit. Anyways, so good healer, life still, swift steel for a first, good support as well. Great hero. Now we have the final water five star, which is the water warlord, Dagan. So Dagan. I would say he's not quite as good as his brothers because he does a heal for his passive. Um, if an enemy dies and they have a dot on them, then everyone on your team gets 35% heal. This is nothing to ignore. 35% is like better than healer. I mean, here, let's, let's go back. The pony, which is a dedicated healer, does 35%. This guy, who's a dedicated damage dealer, also heals by 35%. So it's, it's nothing to just ignore and say it's not there, but his brothers all have extra abilities that sort of amplify their damage output. This doesn't amplify his damage output, it increases survivability of the team um, in a special circumstance. So they have to have a dot on them when they die. Um, you know, you can definitely exploit that. If someone has a dot on them, um, you know, make sure that you kill them before the dot wears off. You know, if they have like 10% life, the dot isn't going to kill them, so just go ahead and get them low so the dot kills them, or go ahead and finish them off when you get that heal. Um, he has the same first attack, chance signal and armor. Second attack is a little bit different. It does an AoE attack that armor breaks for two turns. This is sort of his saving grace. AoE armor break is really good. Um, <laughs> there's not many heroes that have an AoE armor break. And a 30% chance to mark them as well. So you can armor break and mark, which is gonna, you know, increase the damage they take significantly. Um, and then his third skill, it's a single target uh, that does a dot and an additional dot if they're affected by armor break or mark. Uh, so you can do multiple marks. And it, you know, if you skill them up, it increases the effectiveness of the dots and the duration of the dots. Um, so it, he's a good damage dealer, don't get me wrong, you know. I hate it whenever you play games like this and people are like, oh man, I got the water one. He's crap because the fire one is so good or something like that. Just because the fire one's better doesn't mean the water one sucks. He's a good hero. You know, he just has, you have to play him differently. 
they, they fit different roles. You know, the Fire One is a better single target nuker. There's no doubt about that out there. Um, but, you know, he's a different element. And on top of that, he's a different use. You know, the, the Water One provides more utility. The Water One provides an AoE armor blade. You know, the Fire One doesn't get that. Pair this guy with some other AoE attackers, and you're actually going to have higher damage output than you would with the Fire One. Um, you know, you, granted, it takes the right team comp to get that result, but the result is there, and it shouldn't be overlooked, is the point I'm trying to make here. Alright, so that's it with the Water Heroes. For everyone on YouTube, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button, please, so I can get a custom channel name. That would be awesome. Alright.